The Pecos River Basin is a wild and inhospitable place, riddled with cactus, scorpions, rattlesnakes, wild mustangs, and mountain lions. Bert and Dan Rodriguez, father and son, attempted to paddle this same stretch two years ago. Halfway through their trip, severe flash floods trapped them at their campsite, sweeping their kayaks and gear downstream and forcing them to evacuate via helicopter. Now, two years later, Bert and Dan have returned to the Pecos to finish what they started. Dude, he's coming at me, man. That would not feel good. Oh! Pecos River, man, doesn't make anything easy. He's got his paddle. These petroglyphs were carved by the indigenous people in this region, and these are about 3,000 years old. These are just incredible animals to spend a little time with. Heraclitus once said, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it is not the same river, and he is not the same man. These words lingered in my mind as we drove through the Texas desert towards the lower Pecos River. For Bert and Dan, this isn't just another river trip. The Pecos tried to take everything from them two years ago, and she came frighteningly close to succeeding. Our foursome is rounded out by Daniel Underbrink, an avid outdoorsman who has paddled this river several times. And we have arrived. Let's get these boats unloaded. Let's start this adventure. For the next eight days, we will call the Pecos home, so we pack our kayaks accordingly. For millennia, the river has protected herself with near constant stretches of shallow, rocky rapids, so every pound counts. Heavy boats means even more dragging. We're gonna do a quick safety prayer before we shove off, and then we're ready to go. Our Pecos River adventure starts now. All right, made it about 50 yards, and we already have to portage over this small bridge. <laughs> the Pecos region is rich with history. In the 19th century, people referred to west of the Pecos as a reference to the rugged desolation of the Wild West. We've agreed on a daily mileage goal, but like any self-respecting group of anglers, our minds are set on meeting some of the local residents. Fish, fish. Fish out, oh, first fish of the trip. Woo! It's not big, but it's first Pecos River bass. First fish of the trip on the Kitek Swim Bay. Nice. Nice fish, Bert. Thank you. The river begins to morph as we put distance between us and the last semblance of human civilization. The canyon walls grow with each mile as if daring us to continue forward. So I uh, already lost a rod. I broke my first rod. And uh, in the same process, I almost lost my camera boom, which uh, obviously has my GoPro on it. That would be an expensive mistake. So I'm gonna use this Yak Gear paddle leash to uh, secure down my boom so that if it does get knocked off or get broken off, uh, at least hopefully that GoPro will stay attached. Shallow rapids constantly test us, but other than my broken rod, we navigate through them relatively unscathed. <laughs> All of us possess at least moderate experience paddling rapids on sit-on-top kayaks, so we don't bother scouting most of the runs. But a few require a bit more planning. Okay. So Underbrink says this is the one little stretch of rapids that he seems to flip on just about every time. It doesn't look that bad at first glance, but the way the current's pushing, it wants to push you into this giant boulder sideways. Alternatively, we can go around the rock to the left, and he says it's a lot calmer, but what's the fun in that? Woo that was close, man. 
Oh man, well everyone else decided to go left. I made the boneheaded move to try to go right and almost paid for it. Give me style points for that one. While most whitewater paddlers would laugh at us, our sit-on-top fishing kayaks are not designed for this type of water. All that fly up can reach it. My wilderness system's attack is 14 feet long, which hurts its maneuverability, but its extreme stability made up for both its length and my lack of expertise in swift water. With our first day's goal behind us, we begin to search for a suitable camp. It doesn't take long before Underbrink recognizes a familiar rocky outcrop. Not a ton of wood, but there's some cane that we could use. Start a fire. Someone's definitely camped here before, and they left a little bit of trash, which is aggravating to me. This place is 100% pack in, pack out, and uh, it's frustrating when people don't follow that. We'll either burn that or bring it with us. Pick up after whoever is here before. Oh man, it feels good to get out of those wet, stinky, sweaty clothes. We did nine miles today. The total trip's 61, so you know, nine miles out of 61, that's, that's pretty good pace. That's the sixth of the trip, so who knows if we'll stay on track, but after day one, we're sitting pretty. I can get my tent set up, I relax for a little bit. Today was not easy, I'm worn out. That thing looks gnarly. Yeah, they're really cool. It's a cave spider? Yeah, yeah there's... They look like they're dancing. <laughs> Dude, there are so many creepy crawlies in this place. Oh, you pissed finger. him off. <laughs> He's, coming He's chasing you. Robert. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I've you never seen one. down there and see what he does. Dude, he's coming at me, man. I'll tell you something. No, don't come eat it. I'm gonna eat it. No way. Actually, I'd be pretty impressed if you did that. <laughs> Anybody got their fire starter handy? Morning comes and no alarm clocks are needed as pure excitement jolts us awake at first light. Physical exertion from day one provided deep sleep for all of us, despite sleeping on rock. So one thing that all of us really think is important is leaving this place uh, better than we actually found it. We've been picking up trash all morning basically, and hopefully leave this place a little bit cleaner than we found it. And we've got a pretty gnarly headwind first thing this morning. Figures. The steep canyon walls act as a funnel, and the wind takes advantage by whipping through the massive crevice in the earth like a freight train. Ugh. That wind is insane. It's these big canyon walls, they funnel that wind down, and it is gnarly. This river is notorious for near constant headwinds, and now we're getting our first taste. Luckily, the wind doesn't appear to bother the fish. It's a good one. It's a big fish of the trip so far. Yeah! A solid Pecos River largemouth. You're not going to catch any 10 pounders on this river, but every fish fights about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds above its weight class. These fish are just super strong for their size. That guy put up a great fight. I made about six casts this morning. I already got a fish. That's a good sign. I think maybe this cloud cover's got him eating today. Let's see if we can't get a few more. What are they hitting on that swim bait? Nice. When every pound counts, 
Water weight is your enemy. We have multiple water filtration systems, but we also take advantage of every natural spring we come across to fill our reserves. So we just came around this corner and all of a sudden the water cleared up and it's crystal clear. It's been really milky most of the trip so far and uh, that tells us there's a spring nearby. We're gonna use this opportunity to uh, refill our water bottles a little bit cleaner water than we've been using. Um, but even though it's this clear, we still have to filter it because you never know what's in it. Just because it looks clean definitely does not mean it's clean. As we make our way towards Everett Canyon, Dan and Bert announced that the wild Mustangs they encountered on their first trip were spotted not far ahead. All right, so we're coming up to the area where the wild Mustangs like to hang out. And we found some game trails where they've been coming through this thick cane to get to the river. You can see where all the brush is laid down, where they've been using this to get here to drink water. So a uh, good chance that after this next set of rapids, we could see a single horse, couple horses, or even potentially the whole herd. Sure enough, as we round the final bend before Everett Canyon, we hear an unmistakable sound in the distance. Just incredible animals to spend a little time with. They are not afraid of us, that is for sure. They're staring at us. I'm thinking that they want to cross the river, so we're going to get out of their way. But to hang out within about 20 feet of five wild mustangs here in the Pecos River, uh, just an experience that it's hard to put into words. <laughs> The beauty of this place continues to reveal itself as we part from the herd and arrive at camp. So 99% of the time, if you've got a spring where it's running through the ground, because it's being filtered through the earth like that, it's safe to drink just right out of the ground. Now, disclaimer, I'm not telling you to drink any water without filtering it. You never know, but we all just tasted it. It is delicious, so uh, if it is contaminated, at least we're all in it together. <laughs> that is too cool. There seems to be a magic infused in the waterway that has carved a path through this uninhabited desert perhaps instilled by the ancient people who called this place home thousands of years ago. We share our thoughts about the first two days of the trip as we watch the light from the fire dance across the cliff walls. Coming up in part two, we'll traverse the flutes on day three, an endless stretch of shallows that means lots of dragging. Then on day four, we'll make it to the fateful campsite the boys found themselves trapped in during the Langtree flood. And as fate would have it, a storm meets us there. That's not good. 